Welcome to GWA Physics, and this is part two of forces acting on objects on a flat surface. So, in the first part, all the forces were acting parallel or perpendicular. In this situation, we want to show how forces may be applied at angles, and therefore we must solve for their components so that we can see how they affect things like the normal force, and that's important. So let's take a look at this right quick. Let's say that this box is still a five kilogram box, and we're uh, applying a force uh, up and to the right, okay? We're pulling on this box up and to the right at a 40 degree angle with a force of 30 newtons, okay? And so when you get a problem like this, you want to start solving for all the forces that act on the box. And right away, you should be able to say, well, F of G is 50. And you, but on, because this is happening at an angle, you should have a little red flag that says, whoa, wait a minute. Normal force is not going to be 50 this time because we've got a force acting at an angle. Whenever there's a force acting at an angle, the normal force generally will not be the same. So let's show how we find that. First of all, when this vector here is going off at a 40 degree angle, we have a horizontal force, which we're going to call F of X, and we have a vertical force that we're going to call F of Y, and we can solve that a couple of different ways. One of the ways that you solve this problem is that f of x is always going to be equal to the uh, cosine of the angle times the initial force or the force on the hypotenuse, which would be in this situation 30 newtons. And f of y is going to be the sine of the angle times the initial force of 30 newtons, and that would give us y. And so that's one of the ways that you solve for f of x and f of y. In the honors class that I teach, we've also learned how to solve those values by using polar to rectangular, which is a math function we could teach you depending on the calculator that you have. But let's run this right quick. You've got 30 and a 40, and the x value right here is 22.98 newtons. And Y is going to be 19.28 Newtons. So the force in the up direction is 19, and the force horizontally is 22. Well, as it turns out, this is going to be the force. 22.98 is going to be the applied force, which is going to cause the box to move to the right. But you can see that the F of Y is a force that's pulling up on the box. So normally, no pun intended, the normal force does all the supporting of the weight of the box. But because we're pulling up on it, the normal force and the F of Y are working together to support the weight of the box. So in order to solve for the normal force, we need to subtract the F of Y from 50 to get the leftover force that's necessary to support the box. So 50 minus 19.28 equals 30.72. So 30.72 is going to be the force for the normal force. And generally, if you look at this problem, you can see that when we're lifting and we're pulling up and to the right or we're pulling up and to the left, the normal force is going to be smaller than the weight of the box. Now, if we had worked a problem where we were pushing down to the left or right, then we would have found that it's the F of Y would have been in the down direction. And so we would have had to add the F of Y to 50 and we would have had a normal force that's larger. We'll show you that in just a second. So when you look at this problem, we've got all the vectors solved for, and now we're looking for the net force. And so the net force 
is just the 22.98, and the mass is five kilograms, so they're solving for the acceleration. And so 22.98 divided by five equals 4.6. 4.6 meters per second squared is the acceleration of the box under those circumstances. Now let's switch it up so we can see that force that's acting at uh, down on the box and see how it changes. We'll use some of the same numbers and we might throw some friction in there too, but let's see how that changes the normal force. So here's the table, here's the box. The box is still gonna be five kilograms. I just left it over there to the side. So we still have a weight of F of G that's going to be 50 Newtons. But now let's push down and to the left with an angle of 30 degrees and let's make this a 40 Newton force. Well, right away, you're pushing down and to the left. So we're pushing down and we're pushing to the left. And so we have an F of X and we have an F of Y that we must solve for. And let's put in some friction here and say that the coefficient of friction is 0.25. Okay, so the first thing we need is F of X and F of Y. So we're gonna do 40 out of 30 and the F of X is going to the left like this, 34.64 Newtons. And the F of Y over here is 20 Newtons. So we're pushing down on the box and the box is pushing down on the table. These two downward forces have to balance the upward force, so the normal force is gonna be 70. Does everybody understand why I did that? Down and down together, they're in the same direction, so we add, so that's 70 in the down direction. So we have to have a normal force that's pushing in the up direction of 70 also. Now, the last but not least, we need to have this frictional force over here. And from a previous problem, we know that the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. You can see the coefficient of friction is gonna go right in there. And now we have the normal force of 70 Newtons. So 70 times 0.25 is 17.5. So we have 17.5 Newtons of friction going to the right and we have an applied force of 34.64 going to the left. And so we're gonna to have to subtract to find out the net force. So 34.64 minus 17.5 equals 17.14. So the net force here is 17.14 Newtons, and that's equal to 5A, because the mass is still five. So 17 divided by five equals, the acceleration is going to be 3.43 meters per second squared. I hope that that will help clear up any misconceptions or problems that you had working that problem. This is important. You pretty much have to do that first. And that, because that F of Y is going to help us to figure out what the normal force is and having the right normal force is critical in order to solve for the friction. And then we're solving for the net force. And then, of course, the net force also helps us to solve for the acceleration. If you have any questions, come see me. We can work problems together. Thank you for watching.